Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about solid state drive. This is part two of a series of videos where I'd like to talk to you guys about SSDs and hopefully help you choose the right one for your needs because there's so many different ways in which you guys want to utilize your data storage that having one set tool to do everything just doesn't exist much like hard drives ssds have gone down a different myriad of routes with regard to their evolution and because of that they've splintered off into different variants that are more suitable for different tasks now today's video i'm going to focus on nand this is the cell level chips that help ssds be what they are. It's one of their core, most important differences between traditional hard drives. Now, pretty much everyone knows that normal hard drives are comprised of moving parts. Some of the earliest forebears of hard drive technology still resemble that of the most modern versions today. Lots of disks that are read by an arm inside on an actuator, a little arm that reads, and data is taken from it. Because of that, speed limitations do exist, and therefore hard drives will never match the speeds of SSDs, because SSDs are made of multiple chips rather than moving parts, and all the data is near enough instantaneously accessible from the disk. There are, of course, limitations throughout that, compression techniques to the controller itself and how it decides priority and where data is distributed, and where is that data distributed? On the NAND. And NAND is one of the main forces behind when you buy an SSD that controls the price that you're going to pay. Not just the durability of the drive and the capacity of the drive, but ultimately two drives can be the exact same capacity. But the NAND used inside, as well as the interface and other factors that I'll talk about at the end of the video, do play their part quite significantly. And there are largely five or six different kinds of NAND at the top end of the scale. There's lots of deviations from these that are ultimately revisions of existing, you know, NAND trends. But we're going to focus on these six because these are the most six commonly seen and observed SSDs that we've seen in the market today. So let's go with one of the oldest variants of SSD NAND. This is SLC, single layer um, chips. So these are NAND processors, these cells even, um, these are single layer. The result of this being that the chips that are distributed over a single layer of data are able to have one bit per cell. These result in some of the very best performance and reliability of any kind of NAS, uh, NAS, uh, sorry, NAND SSD out there. Data is so freely accessible that the speed is phenomenal. And it was kind of the original building blocks of NAND in SSD. What are the downsides? One, it is tremendously expensive. It is by and large the, the most physical manufacturer of all of them in terms of the NAND chips. You're not really using a lot of compression technique that you're forced to do on the other NAND chips that we're gonna talk about later. The second one is because of that lack of finesse, the available capacities are tiny. Uh, the original system of flash SLC NAND that we saw in early SSD drives and indeed USB and uh, early flash modules before that were incredibly small in capacity. And SLC just doesn't give you the capacity limits that we're used to today. First generation SSDs are pretty much all SLC. And although SLC NAND is still used in some enterprise sectors today, because of that high durability and um, speed, the capacities it presents are just too much of a limitation for many. Now this brings us to the next tier, MLC multi-layer chips all these are predominantly two layers now mlc arrives with the capacity for two bits per cell because things are dual layered the chips themselves have a higher um, density um, arrangement of capacity open to you and the price is significantly no or noticeably at least lower than that of slc price on price per capacity so MLC is kind of the go-to you see from a lot of mid-range SSD producers that want to produce a product that gives you good performance, uh, a reasonable capacity at a moderate price. Although it's worth highlighting that the performance, though good, 
uh, doesn't stack up as well as the endurance of SLC. And choosing an, an MLC NAND chip, you have to bear in mind that you're not getting the truest, most um, robust and durable NAND out there. But of course, you win in capacity. The next one down, EMLC, is kind of an enterprise grade to MLC. It's still, it's still the two layers, two bits per layer, but it has a higher data rate overall. And uh, because of that, performance is considerably higher than that of MLC to a noticeable degree, given the similarities in their build. However, the price is higher as well. The durability is higher than MLC because of the efficiency of data being pulled. But that price point is still noticeable and there's no denying that the enterprise level um, quality of them is reflected not only in their build, but of course also the price tag. Now, this is where we go into probably one of the most familiar ones for all of you, TLC NAND, triple layer cells. These are ones that give you just the best price point in terms of capacity overall and how much you can get out of it. Things like over-provisioning over the years have changed the way we look to capacities. Do wait for the end of the video where I talk about those factors. But um, these triple layer cells with three bits per cell stack data horizontally and arrive at a much, much better price per terabyte or gigabyte limit than any of the previously mentioned NANDs. But they, you do pay for that in terms of endurance. They're not designed for the kind of endurance of right as MLC or SLC. TLC is good, but there are variants of TLC which do give you a little bit more. I'll talk about in just a second. But TLC is kind of the best when you want the biggest capacities where you want high on up some speed, but none of your breathtaking stuff in the high tens of thousands, none of your hundreds of thousands. That's where you want to live. Now, this is where we go into um, kind of a throw around, one that the industry has really taken to heart, and that's 3D NAND or VNAND. This is featured across MLC and TLC, and it is um, the same kind of architecture as those, but the data is distributed vertically. It's stacked vertically across. Um, it is laid across the chip, so good, da, 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 it goes up each time with each pass and therefore data is far more efficiently stacked and distributed for access therefore the capacity is high the performance is pretty good although not as high as it could be overall but the overall price versus capacity is you know hard to beat and you do see vnand arriving in everything from samsung to ssd uh, to seagate to wd you see it more and more and of course, WD have their own proprietary NAND manufacturer, so you will see a lot more unique stuff from them. But there's no avoiding that uh, 3D NAND has become pretty much the golden middle ground of SSD development in terms of performance and price. It's not the tippity top of either, but you're getting good capacity, good speed, and good reliability overall. Not the best of the best of the best, but it's the one you're probably going to come across, and it is still pretty damn reliable. Now, QLC is the final one that we're not seeing much of because with QLC or quad layer chips, this is four bits per layer across four layers. This is where things really start to fall apart because you are getting insane capacities. I mean, this is where you're starting to see SSDs now arriving at silly heights. But with that, you are losing some of the durability and the performance. You get great capacity, but the speed at which you can access it, the IOPS and stuff like that. There are, you know, there are factors of trying to get to that data in that way. And therefore that's why the market has shifted more towards TLC and um, 3D VNAND than it ever has to QLC. Maybe things will change with these high capacities and larger distribution of chips coming, but there are other factors that allow you to make up for losses in dur durability, performance, uh, and overall read and write speeds and IOPS. And that's these four factors. First and foremost, interface. The majority of the SSD NAND that we talked about today are available in SATA, SAS, and NVMe. Now, SATA with its 6 gigs per second, SAS with its 12 gig, gig, gig per second, and NVMe, and as well as U2, a kind of proprietary SAS version of that, provide speeds that allow you to get a lot more out of these NAND than originally envisioned, envisaged. So it's worth highlighting that 
if you choose the right interface, you might make up the speed loss that some of these NAND performing, uh, lower performing NAND chips do put out there. So it's worth bearing that in mind. The next one is the controller. The controller is ultimately the brain of an SSD that presents the data as fast and efficiently as possible to the connected interface device, the host device, with the SSD being the client. Now, more intelligent controllers, enterprise grade controllers have come out that combined with the right NAND arrive with fantastic read and write speeds, um, sequential read and write speeds of random, as well as high IOPS as well being pulled from the SSD, allowing even slightly lower performing NAND to have a lot more performance eked out of it with the right controller. And we're seeing a lot more um, of the PCIe NVMe connections to have improved controllers to really give you some insane speeds of 400 to 5,000 megabytes per second read performance from an SSD, which is 10 times that of SATA SSDs right the way back in the day. Now, next we can talk about wear levering. This kind of comes into a combination of the NAND and the controller with the controller understanding and intelligently utilizing its NAND chips, not just using what it can see, but making sure there is an even keel for the utilization and access of the NAND so they don't all wear out inappropriately. When it understands which NAND layers and chips and cells have had the least read, uh, sorry, the least write and the most write and will leverage accordingly. So. Even if you're utilizing a NAND SSD, right, uh, the NAND on your SSD that seemingly shouldn't uh, have the right durability for your needs, things like wear leveling can give you a great deal more utilization and long term um, use of your SSDs overall. And the final thing that's utilized a lot in SSDs these days, which really buffers performance in an intelligent way is something called over provisioning it's when you have an ssd that kind of secretly has some extra capacity that you don't have you don't have ready access to now it's not really secret a number of a number of us have bought ssds in the past and wondered why are we seeing ssds that arrive at 480 uh, sorry uh, 240 and 250 gig or 480 and 500 gig and 512 gig, 960 and 1 TB and 1024. This is because of over provisioning. Because some SSD uh, vendors and that NAND will give you the full available capacity and others clip the edges. And this allows for some of that unused capacity can be used for improved endurance down the line. It can be used for improved internal operations and flow. And it can be utilized for data to be moved around whilst the device is being accessed using that extra kind of side saddle capacity ready and accessible with over provisioning and over provisioning with the right NAND can give you a performance breakthrough that just wasn't there before. But this has been the types of NAND utilized in modern SSD in home and business. I do recommend you sort of take a good look at that. Uh, the NAND before you buy any SSD because although on the face of it they should all pretty much do the job well and if you're using a SATA SSD for the most part very little of this will matter to the home user but business users and those that have watched my comparison videos where I talked about WD and Seagate with their own NAS SSDs it's worth highlighting the performance difference between these two was significantly higher with the Seagate giving you a great deal more in terms of performance thanks to the NAND and the controller controller sure but predominantly that NAND, and it made all the difference. But thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, do click like. To learn more or check out parts three and four, do click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.